Hey, welcome all of you uh, for this class on uh, mechanics introduction. As I always very often uh, say that it's uh, it's a good practice for us to keep recalling our fundamentals and basics uh, once in a while and uh, so that we are currently in touch. So towards that I decided to make all the basic lessons as well right from scratch. Now uh, this is not only to brush up uh, the faded and rusted memories of all of us uh, pilots but these are going to be useful for um, uh, high school students as well right now uh, let me introduce the subject uh, man has always been inquisitive and uh, we try to uh, find out and explain as to why things can happen there are two fallouts which which are possible because of that we can try and predict uh, uh, what is likely to happen if we are able to understand what if you are able to understand and uh, explain as to why something is happening why movements are happening how things are coming to a stop so our rational mind is trying to uh, uh, give an explanation for all this and uh, therefore, this interesting subject of uh, physics, uh, uh, some people don't find it very interesting. Uh, the, uh, in my un understanding and opinion, the flaw lies in the way we teach the subject and not the subject uh, per se. So, uh, we let's have an open mind in uh, approaching the subject towards its learning and uh, let's try and make it as interesting as possible as we go along. Okay, as we continue with the studies uh, of our mechanics, there are two terminologies which you will keep coming across, mechanics and kinematics. Mechanics. Mechanics is study of motion of objects. And of course, we are studying basically motion of everything so uh, we try to explain as to why uh, things move in a particular way be it a circular path be it a straight path which is be it out of gravity why it goes fast why it slows down etc etc and uh, as i explained to you let's have a positive approach uh, i will advise that try and not to memorize any information try and understand develop an understanding right from beginning, uh, give an additional thought to whatever you are learning and then try to question out whether your understanding is correct or no. Otherwise, uh, uh, when we get into solving numericals and when we try to uh, uh, solve complex numericals, we could get into issues if you have not understood the basics. So avoid memorizing information. Avoid abstracting the information from the physical world that it describes and explains. That's what. Don't try to relate it uh, and don't have preconceived notions. Be open-minded to what is being taught. That's what in gist it is meaning. Contemplate the information. Think about its meaning and its application. So, uh, it's in our own minds that we have to make the subject interesting. And I'm sure it, it is and... Uh, it's a, a fabulous subject and a fascinating subject and uh, the scientists all over the world are still probing deeper and deeper into finding out the mysteries of several uh, uh, several physical happenings of the physical world. Okay, uh, kinematics. Kinematics is the science of describing the motion of objects using words, diagrams, numbers, graphs, equations and trying to prove a point, trying to consistently prove a point and um, uh, this is more uh, quantitative in nature and of course all our lessons and everything is an attempt in kinematics and of course it's a branch of mechanics to develop sophisticated mental models that serve to describe the motion of real world objects. Uh, that's what is kinematics all about.
Okay, let us get on to very, very fundamental concepts in the physical world. Uh, there are two concepts which I want to explain now. That is the scalars and the vectors. What, what is a scalar concept? Co scalars are quantities that are fully described by a magnitude alone. There is a magnitude that is a mass. What is the mass of so-and-so uh, uh, particular aircraft or uh, uh, things like that? Distance between two points and density, all these pure quantities that, that, that are used in the physical world are called scalars. And of course, different mathematical uh, uh, operations are possible, uh, which we shall see. Whereas vectors are quantities that are fully described by both a magnitude and more importantly, a direction. Any, any con con concept, any, any, any quantity with a particular direction, acting in a particular direction, which can be described and which can be firmly uh, established that it is in this particular direction is called the vector. So examples of vectors are velocity, acceleration, and it is always represented by an arrow. And as you can see, it is the, the quantity is here, V, the velocity is shown with an arrow on the head to indicate that it is a vector quantity. Okay, uh, we learned that uh, mathematical operations are possible uh, in uh, scalars as well as vectors, right? So, uh, scalars, of course, what is this weight plus that weight? You bought one, one kilo of apples and one kilo of oranges. What is the total weight of fruits you bought? Is one plus one, two. You, you could just easily add on. Um, uh, uh, let's see as to how we are going to add uh, vectors. Now here in this picture, I have shown three vectors, three vectors. A, B is one vector. It is represented by an arrow as you can see. C, D is another vector which is in a, pointing in a different direction. Of course, the length of the arrow uh, indicates the approximate magnitude of, uh, of itself. And E, F is another F E, in fact, F E is another uh, vector which I have shown. Now we are going to see as to how to add this. If one were to ask to add these three vectors, you have to put the tail of the second arrow uh, exactly parallelly, move it and put it on the uh, head of the first arrow, first vector and keep building up one by one and finally see the result between the uh, start point of the first vector and end point of the last vector. That's how you graphically add uh, the vectors and of course there are mathematically also you can add vectors which we will see. Uh, in this in this picture, I, I just tried to show uh, what I just explained that how to uh, put the arrows on one uh, tail on one head and then constructing the keep going on constructing the different vectors and finally arrive at a resultant uh, uh, vector. Uh, in this uh, uh, finally uh, you see the displacement bit, I mean uh, the uh, distance and the direction between A and D that's the final final vector that you would get. Okay, uh, let me explain uh, this concept of scalars and vectors a little bit more. Here I have taken something called uh, uh, distance traveled and uh, dis displacement. Distance traveled is the uh, uh, scalar quantity. Uh, a body may move different uh, distances in different uh, directions and uh, it can keep moving. But finally, uh, how much it is displaced from its original position is called the 
displacement okay let let's get on to this uh, diagram in this uh, diagram the object has moved from a to b by 5 meters b to c by 6 meters c to d by 4 meters and d to e by another 8 meters that means in it it has moved a total of 15 plus 8 23 meters it has moved but how much it has been displaced it has just been displaced by 11 meters in a north easterly direction that's what is the displacement please notice that i told that it is displaced by 11 meters in a northeasterly direction in fact on a map i can easily give no, uh, give a uh, exact bearing by 060 uh, 06011 uh, so i could indicate the displacement by which uh, the direction and the distance by which it has been displaced so that is the uh, vector which uh, which it represents so i hope we are able to clarify the difference between displacement and distance traveled okay uh, let me introduce you to some fundamental units we all know and we are all very familiar that the fundamental units are mass length and time so uh, the fundamental unit of uh, mass is kilograms in the SI standard international system. The, uh, the uh, unit of length is meters and time is seconds. And in, of course, there have been other uh, systems in which feet has been used for length and uh, centimeters have been used for length and grams and pounds have been used for mass and etc. etc. But what I want to explain nowadays as uh, eventually the, all these also will become fundamental you, uh, they will be called the fundamental units that is the electric current the temperature the luminosity and amount of substance they also uh, can be grouped together as fundamental units so the units of electrical current is ampere the temperature is kelvins and luminosity candela amount of substance is small so uh, so the list will slightly expand and there are more units i'm sure it is going to be added in fundamental units as uh, in, in the years to come let us dwell into fundamental units because it is interesting and some uh, uh, some interesting facts may emerge out the fundamental unit of mass is kilograms in SI units and this standard was established in 1887. This is the mass of a particular cylinder made of platinum iridium alloy which we can consider as very very stable alloy. The picture of uh, 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 which I put is the picture of this particular uh, cylinder which is kept in the uh, national physical museum in Paris and that has been adapted as the standard one kilogram all over the world since 1887. Okay, let's analyze the length. Uh, the standard international unit of length is meter as I told you. It is defined in terms of a natural phenomena. What is that? One meter is defined as the distance traveled by light in vacuum in a time interval of 1 upon 2997924586 uh, 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 seconds uh, uh, why uh, it is like this it's it's all a matter of scientific requirement so uh, let's not delve into it let's just go uh, uh, let us accept it as a matter of fact then uh, the unit of uh, time is one second is defined as the time required for cesium cesium 133 atom to undergo 919263 vibrations between two hyperfine levels of its ground state again it's just a, a matter of information let's not uh, bother too much about this 
but the idea of putting it is uh, is that there is a definitive uh, way there is a method in which we have decided on the uh, quantity of length and time so talking about time accuracy of time is very very important may not be for day to day um, uh, phenomena but for scientists who work on sub nuclear uh, research uh, for such calculations etc uh, plus uh, uh, aeronautical uh, astro uh, outer space travel uh, calculations of uh, uh, so, um, uh, several uh, planetary motions and etc accuracy of time is very important so i thought uh, i will just come out with this uh, particular thing this clock with an uncertainty of five parts that is in 10 to the power 15 have been developed that means it runs for 10 to the power 15 seconds it will gain or lose five seconds so you can convert this particular time and uh, that means it works out to six million years before uh, it could gain or lose uh, a second that's the kind of accuracy which has been which we have developed but we expect the clock uh, 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 to run for 10 to the power 18 seconds before it can uh, gain or lose even a second uh, that means that ever since this universe has been started that the big bang it would have lost uh, just about two seconds till now that, that's the kind of accuracies which we are able uh, which we are moving towards we saw fundamental units but there are other units which we will come across they are all called the derived units so uh, here i try to show some derived units the unit of force that is newton the pressure that is the pascal energy work joules and power in watts we are going to analyze each one of in great depth uh, as we come across but these are all called the derived units and of course its symbols are shown its its units are also shown what we are going to talk is uh, kind of preparatory for the next uh, classes to come now we are getting on to actual uh, uh, business and uh, let's discuss two concepts uh, speed and velocity Speed is a scalar quantity that refers to as to how fast an object is moving. Speed can be thought of as the rate at which an object covers a distance. That means it changes its position by a particular distance in a particular time. And uh, so that is uh, the total change in distance upon uh, in, a, in a unit time is called the speed of course there is no direction at the moment whereas velocity is the vector quantity that refers to the rate at which an object changes its position uh, that that's more important uh, imagine a person moving rapidly one step forward and one step backwards and always returning to the original starting point but uh, whereas this may result in frenzy activity but his velocity eventually if you have to describe is not moving at all its velocity is zero uh, that's the difference between the speed and velocity okay, uh, it is very important for us to understand everything happen doesn't happen at absolute uh, uniform rate even though in the study of physics we we in many situations we consider that things are happening at a uniform rate that is to just enhance our understanding uh, so uh, we must be very very clear that absolute uniformity is it's a little bit rare and uh, so we will talk about average speed average speed is a scalar quantity that refers to as to how fast an object is moving uh, as I told you, uh, speed can be thought of as a rate at which the uh, object covers a distance. So in the first, let's say one second, it covers five and next 5.5, 5, 
third 5.2 fourth is uh, 4.9 then eventually you take the total distance and total time and then divide it uh, so that's we will call it average speed and we will call is call the speed similarly average vector is a vector quantity that refers to as we described we are averaging out uh, at uh, uh, two three uh, readings you can say that's that's important okay i hope you found this lesson uh, interesting and uh, uh, please keep following my lessons on my youtube channel and uh, on our website and uh, eventually we are going to make it uh, much more professionally presented uh, that's uh, that's what is our aim and assurance uh, that's that sh uh, should happen over a period of time uh, when we are able to generate some kinds of uh, some kinds of funds anyway so uh, please feel free to offer your comments and critical comments uh, to improve the uh, quality of, of our uh, lectures uh, especially in terms of timings in terms of uh, depth which is covered uh, please feel uh, please feel uh, free to offer your comment uh, comments uh, thank you very much for uh, listen to having listened to this lesson and let's meet each other for more and more lessons to come